you got your Bibles, I want you to go to two places. I'm going to, uh, I believe. You got my PowerPoint ready, son? Earth to Seth. <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time, Seth. Huh? You got a PowerPoint back there? The rat, uh, huh? You got it turned on? All right. Go to the first part. There you go. Are we together now? <laughs> I'm kidding you, Seth. Good to be here tonight. I am, I started last week. Now, I'm aware of something. We've got a lot of new people in our church that hadn't heard a lot of what I've been preaching. Now, some of y'all have heard it over and over. And you need to hear it some more so you can get it right. See, I want to tell you what I believe. I believe in an imminent, let me say it that way, imminent return of Christ. An imminent return of Christ. Now, if you believe in the imminent return of Christ, you got to be a pre-trib rapturist. If you believe in the imminent return of Christ. Now, when I say return of Christ, he's coming in two phases. He's coming at the rapture for the believer. And listen to me carefully. There's no signs in the Bible that has to be fulfilled for him to come. Not one. Don't go looking for a sign of the rapture because the, the sign of the rapture was he rose from the grave. No sign. All the signs in the Bible is not for the rapture. The signs in the Bible are for the revelation. Now, let me slow down. I don't want to get anybody too far over your head. He said, he said rapture, revelation. What's the difference? Well, I'll show you in a moment, but let me at least tell you about it right now. At the rapture, Christ comes in the air. At the revelation... He comes back to the ground. At the rapture, he comes after his church. At the revelation, he comes with his church. Make a little sense? Now, I'm going to show you in the Bible. Last week, last week we talked about a premillennial view. I believe. To believe the Bible correctly, you've got to be premillennial. Somebody help me preach. Now, let me explain that again. I want, I do know I got a lot of new people, and don't feel like we're, I don't, I ain't never heard a lot of that. Well, there's, most churches don't preach what I preach. Cross the road, that church, they don't believe what I preach. Up the road, they don't believe what I preach. They don't preach no rapture. I'll tell you what they preach. They preach the first coming, a second coming, and the second coming, he'll get the uh, goats on one side and the sheep on the other side. That's what they believe. Well, it's a big mess. And then you got, you know, we, I believe that Christ could come right now. They, and I personally believe there's probably a gap between the rapture and the tribulation, but I won't go that I don't want to get too far over your head. But then there'll be a seven-year tribulation. And then he comes after the tribulation and comes back a second time to the earth. Amen? Amen. And it's exciting that it could happen any moment. Amen. Now, Amen. now let me, let me slow down again because I want to review just a little bit of last week. I told you three beliefs 
on the millennial kingdom. And I took you to Revelation 19, 20, and 21 and proved it to you. The premillennial belief. I showed you in 19 that he comes back with a rod of iron proceeding out of his mouth, which is the word of God. And then he had a vesture dipped in blood. And he had armies in heaven coming with him. You said, who are the armies? I'll show you in a moment. The church. And he came back and he fought the battle of Armageddon, put the false prophet and the beast in the, in, the, in the lake of fire, put the devil in the bottomless pit, put a chain on him for a thousand years. Now here's where we get millennial. The, one, the word 1,000 means millennial. If Christ comes back pre-millennial, pre, he comes back before the millennial. Now, here's the lesson title. You can go back to our original page. I am preaching on teaching on a rapture you can't miss, a judgment you must face, and a supper you will want to attend. Now, let me show you in the scripture. Go to 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to try to go slow. This may take a few weeks, okay? Um, I'm thinking about it. I really am. I, I don't know if I got it in me or not, Jeff. You pray if I got you, you, you can tell me later if I got it in me, Jeff. But I'm thinking about just starting on Wednesday night after school starts to just preach the Re book of Revelation one more time. How many like to see me do that? I, I think I just do that. I, amen. Wouldn't it be good to preach on this and the Lord come while we're preaching it? <laughs> now, I'm trying to teach tonight, so bear with me. I'm going to give you two passages. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, and verse 50 or 51. And we'll take you to the end of that chapter. These are major rapture verses. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. In Thessalonians, and by the way, we're a whole lot like the Thessalonians. Our world is, our Christian world is. There's so much ignorance about death. Yeah, they are. If you die right now as a believer, your soul and spirit and inner man will leave this shell and you'll go to glory. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. By the way, you better make sure you're saved so you can go to heaven. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm going to preach something. I'm just, um, I'm just teaching as slow as I can. Verse 13. And the reason I said all that, there's a lot of ignorance. There's some people believe. Uh, I used to pastor a church beside another church. That's the craziest thing i ever seen, man. They believed in soul sleep. Oh, yeah. Nobody's ever heard of that. Yeah. It's the craziest thing in the world. Right. No scripture to it. Right. I can't find none. Right. I, can, I can prove the soul don't sleep by taking you to Revelation right. and talk about the martyrs during the Revelation. It said their souls were under the altar, and here's what they did. They cried out and said, Lord, how long? For you avenge us. If you, how in the world can somebody be sleeping if we're talking? Only Denny McGrew can talk in his sleep. I know that. <laughs> Amen? You're pointing at him. He talks his sleep. <laughs> Hope he talks good, okay? <laughs> But I would not have you to be ignorant. Those people believe your soul sleeps. There's some people believe that there's no hell, that at the judgment you'll burn up and you'll have an annihilation. That's false doctrine. And I was beside church that done that. 
And I'll, I'll, man, I'm bogging down. <laughs> it's all right to tell a story to, isn't it? I was, I was pastor in church, and I don't know how I got in this. I really don't. I, I, get, I get into the office things sometimes. But anyway, this person came to my church whose family was in that Adventist, primitive Adventist church. Jeremy, you, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I led him to Christ. He died, so I needed to do his funeral. We went up in the frame to do his I did his funeral to church and went up the frame to bury him. Well, you got to remember the Adventists had the call on that because his family. So here's what happened. Y'all with me? That's why it said, be not ignorant of them that are asleep. I'm just saying this story so you understand. So here, I, I'm, I'm fat now, but I'm skinny compared to what I used to be. Okay? So I went out in the community, and there's a hill here and a hill here. And I said, uh, where's the graveyard? And nobody said anything. So we took that casket and went straight up a mountain. Jeff, right dead. I could take you there right now. Straight up a mountain. It, and see my hand? That's how steep it was. So you say, how'd you get there? Two oxygen tanks. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I had to stop. Go <gasps> and, uh, and I thought, well, they got a cemetery, Jeremy, up on top of the mountain. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We got up to the steepest place, and there's a hole right there in the ground. I ain't never seen people do that. I mean, they put a casket in like that. And I, I'm, I'm a big mouth, okay? I asked him, I said, what in God's name is this for? And here was the answer. And one of them was wiping tears from their eyes. I felt bad for them. And they said, we got them on the steepest part of this mountain because we don't want no water get to their soul. God help them, Jesus. Mercy. I had two deacons in my church take me down off the mountain. And, uh, and I'm not trying to laugh at them. I really am not. I, I hope it doesn't come across that way, though it is kind of humorous. If you'd have seen me up there, you said, dear God, what happened? But isn't that ignorance? Right. Why, why did they do such a thing? Why did they do such a thing? I ain't saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they're not even going to heaven. I don't, you know, I know some of them believe, and I wonder, but I, I'm not going to get into that. But there's some people, because they don't know the Bible, do some weird stuff. Am I all right? You see, you're not going to get this lesson done. I hadn't planned on it. Now go with me. Are you there? What do you think Paul said? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Let me explain that. What's he mean, them which are asleep? That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Man, if the grave holds the soul and the body, that's a lot of sorrow. And not a lot of hope in that. And Paul kind of contradicts that because he said, I'd rather live uh, and be in Christ or die and gain and depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Now, let me explain. Put beside sleep your body. The body is going to sleep. Now, I'll prove that to you here. Look at verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, how many believe that? 
listen, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Their body is asleep in the earth. Their soul is awake in heaven. And at the resurrection, the body will be resurrected and awakened, and the soul and spirit will meet the body and be resurrected. Amen? Amen. You say, why are you being so careful? Because I don't want any of you to be ignorant. I remember, and I'm not, I, 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 I'm almost reluctant to tell stories like this because uh, you might think I'm a little hard hearted or something. I'm not. But I'm seeing a lot of weird stuff at funerals. I think you ought to grieve at a funeral. We forgot how to grieve. But, ladies and gentlemen, don't we get ridiculous? I mean, I've, I've had folks come up and about knock a casket over. And say, talk to me, mama. And crying and bawling, listen to me. I felt for them. And you know what I I said in my soul? They just don't know the truth. Mama's not in that body. Mama can't talk from that body. Mama ain't in that body. Mama's in glory. And if you believe mama's in glory, you wouldn't be really as sorrowful as you are as if you had no hope. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate every time I do a funeral. It breaks my soul to see it. We're separated from loved ones, but they're in a better place. Wouldn't come back. I'm going to, am I going too slow? Somebody help me. Don't sorrow as you have no hope. People tell folk all kinds of weird stuff. Now listen to this. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, and that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We're not going to keep them from coming up. They're going to come up first, actually. Is that Bible? For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a what? Shout. With the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall what? Rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Am I preaching? He'll descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. Now, y'all still got your Bibles? I'm teaching tonight. I wish, what's going to happen? My time's going to run out and you're going to say, I, I could start right now and preach to midnight if I could hold up. <laughs> and I ain't worried about me holding up, it's you holding up. It's blah, blah. <laughs> now look at 1 Corinthians 15. You see why you're going so slow? I want to be methodical. Then I'm going to show you two more things. Then we'll start an outline. If I don't get done tonight, I'm not going to get done tonight. I think I need to show you in the Bible. Now, now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. In other words, this body in the state that it's in cannot go to heaven. It's sinful. But look what he said. Be I hold, I show you a what? Mystery. What is a mystery, Jeremy? It's something that hadn't been revealed yet. Ladies and gentlemen, 
If you go look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament over and over says that Jesus Christ is coming back a second time, and it's clear he's coming back a second time. But in this passage, it says it's a mystery. Why is it a mystery? Because it does not have to do with Israel. It has to do with the church. And the church is a mystery. That's where, I, well, I don't want to get too deep, but if you go back to the 70 weeks of Daniel, he said there's 70 weeks to determine my people. My people, the people there was Israel. 69 weeks until Messiah was cut off. That's Christ when he came the first time. Then the 70th week of Daniel when the prince is going to make a peace pact with Israel. That starts the tribulation period. Not the right rapture doesn't start the tribulation period. The, the Antichrist does. Amen. But you say, at first, well then how, where's the church? The church is a mystery. It's in between the 69th and the 70th week. We're here right now. And the next thing to happen is for us to be taken out. Amen? Now let's go on. A lot of this I'll explain as we go on. And I feel kind of bad because I'm going to have to end and not get everything done I want to tonight. I had a goal and it ain't going to happen. But I show, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all what? Changed. Changed. That means there's going to be a people on this planet that will not have to die physically. But they're going to be changed. In a moment, sound a little like the other passage, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen? Amen. Now listen carefully. I'll, I'll, I'll cover this thoroughly when we get further. But that last trump has thrown a lot of people off. Hadn't it, Bobby? Because you can go over into Revelation, and there's seven seals, seven trumpets, and the seventh trumpet sounded. A lot of people said, that's the last one. No, no, I say it isn't. There's another one after that. But listen carefully. Jeff, this is important teaching. There is the last trumpet of the rapture to end the age. Every time an age was ended and Christ was doing a new thing, he had a, a call, a, a trumpet was to call the assembly. Well, one day his trumpet's going to sound and call the church to assembly. But also there's the last trumpet of the revelation. They're different. And if you don't understand the difference, that's why you get to false doctrine. That's one of the reasons. You with me, Zach? How many it? Y'all still awake? How many wave at me if you're awake, okay? I worry that you don't went to sleep. Okay, good. Good. I'm hoping I'm... You said you're so slow tonight. Well, sometimes you can be fast and sometimes you need to slow. And I'm, I'm going slow for a purpose. Now, because it's getting late, can I show you two more things? Go back to 1 Thessalonians for just one minute, then I'm going to show you something. Hurry. I'll close with this, then we'll go to the outline next week. Wow. I said we'd start in the fall. We might start about winter. <laughs> Go back to First Thessalonians for a moment, just, just, just for a second. Let me show you something. It said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what? With the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which shall alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the... Where? Got that, Jeff? Two more, two more, ver one more verse. No, well, y'all not one more. Turn to Zechariah. 
Turn to Zechariah. When you get there, say amen. 14. I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to be ignorant about what's going on. If you had a loved one die recently and they were saved, they're in heaven. Don't let nobody tell you different. Don't tell, let no priest from no Catholic church. Don't let a Mormon tell you different. Let people baptize people for the dead. That's ignorance. Don't be ignorant of it. All right, look at chapter 14. Now notice, look at me, this is not the rapture. You'll see the difference. I want to show you the difference. I want everybody in here, when you walk out the door, know the difference. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, verse 1, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. That's Armageddon. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go into uh, captivity, and the residue of the people shall be not cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. Notice, and his feet shall what? Stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which was before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley. And half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north and half toward the south. And you shall flee, uh, flee to the valley of the mountains for the valley of the mountains also shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee as ye fled in from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, Uzziah, the king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, shall come. Say it with me. Remember last week I read, read uh, the 19th chapter. What's going to happen when he comes a second time? The armies are going to mount up on white horses, Jeff. That's us. You see how you know it's us? Because they were clothed in fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saint. And come back with him. Well, if we're going to come back with him, how do we get up there? I'll tell you how we get up there. We get up there by a rapture. Y'all with me? Amen. How many with me? I hope y'all don't go out there and say, well, he's so slow. <laughs> well, you'd be slow too if you really wanted to make sure everybody's taught properly and they understand it. Amen. Now, let me show you one more thing. And we'll probably close. Huh? If you go too fast, there's a lot of young Christians here. And it's not a fault to be a young Christian. We just don't want you to stay young. We want to grow you up. And I know this stuff can be a little bit tough. Now go to Revelation chapter number four. I'll close with this. Now, I want to show you where the rapture is in the revelation. And I can prove it to you tonight. Now, can I do one thing? Oh, three minutes. Good night. I, I'm going to finish this part. Look at Revelation 1.19. I'm going to give you an outline of the book of Revelation. Write the things which thou hast seen. That was the resurrected Christ. And the things which are. That's the seven churches. And the things which shall be here after. Things which were seen, chapter 1. Things which are, seven churches, chapter 2 and 3. Things which shall be here after, 4 through 21. 
Right? Y'all got it? After this, I looked. Look at verse 1. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. Listen to this. Listen to this, Zach. It's not the same wording, but it's pretty close. And the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me. Remember, voice, trumpet, all happening at the same time. And said, come up hither, and I'll show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow around the throne in the sight like an emerald. Now notice carefully. Let me show you the church, and I'll prove it. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in what? And they had what? Well, then where'd they get the gold crowns and where'd they get their clothing? Well, I'll tell you what it done. He ratcheted them. He judged them at the judgment seat. He put a crown on their head and a robe on them. And by the way, now I've got to give you something important. Chapter 2 and 3, you read it, find out if I'm right. Chapter 2 and 3, it says this. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the now I double dare you to try this go read chapter 4 to 19 and come back and tell me if that's in there anymore here's what's in there he did half an ear let him hear why didn't it say what the spirit says to the churches because the spirit is in the church and when the church goes out of here the Holy Spirit will go back to his ministry as he did in the Old Testament of coming upon people but not in people. And it's the Holy Spirit is keeping the Antichrist from showing up now. So when he, good Lord have mercy, when he comes, he'll take the Holy Spirit out of here. Now let me give you an illustration. Man, I, I ain't getting nowhere. <laughs> but what, before I give the illustration, I'm going to go five minutes over, okay? I can't help it. Y'all, y'all's okay, ain't you? Okay. One more thing, and then I'll give you the illustration. Let me make sure you know the, who those were in the white raiment was. Got to show you. Look, look at Revelation 19 now. Go back over there. I'm teaching carefully. And verse number seven, let's be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she be arrayed in what? What? Clean and white. For the fine linen is the What? Does that make sense? Then if you go on Revelation 19, he said those that's coming back, look at verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in what? Well, who is that? Well, it has to be the church. Because nowhere in the Bible says Israel's going to get a crown. They don't have, they don't have the crowns we do. Now, illustration. I did this one time, and I, if I'd had time tonight, I, I've run Tyler all over the country. He's my chauffeur this week. Have I done okay for a man that's been running all over the country? But anyway, I, I almost come with an illustration. Tonight, I started to bring some wooden matchsticks and lay them out on a table. And lay some pins out on the table. 
that I was going to bring me a magnet. And what I was going to do, y'all visualize it? Hey, Kennedy, you got this? Kennedy, let me ask you. If I put that magnet over that wooden sticks, is anything going to happen? Why? They ain't the same nature, right? But those pins, if I put that magnet over them pins, what's going to happen? They're going to be sucked up. They're going to be snatched. They're going to be raptured. Well, here's it is. Holy Spirit is in us, and that's God's nature. And when God calls for that Holy Spirit, his magnet is going to come down, grab a hold of you and the Holy Spirit, and rapture you up out of here. Oh, happy day. Yes, we're struggling. Yes, we're in a battle. One of these days, though. We're getting out of here. Now, here's my question. If you died today or if that, if that event happened right now, how many know you're going to heaven if you're here? If you're saved, you do. Amen. Glory. Now, I didn't get, I didn't get to nothing. Yes, sir. Inject a question. Yes. And he's going to bring it down with him when he, and the body's coming out of the grave to meet it. Same, Same time. And they were, we won't prevent that from happening. They come first. They're only five feet lower than we are. They come first. Holy Spirit gets in them. They have a new body, clothed that body, and they go to glory. And we all go together and meet him in the clouds. And then we come back with him at the end of the tribulation. Stand with me. If you're not saved, you ought to come. Amen. Maybe you ought to come and just say, man, I even saw the Lord come quickly. Father, you touch the invitation as uh, Jeremy comes up and just reads, uh, sings a song, him and Brittany. And Lord, uh, I don't know if everybody's saved, but I pray if there's somebody not, there'll be meat Tyler down here. And then, Lord, uh, I pray, Lord, that... Uh, there's Christians here that's kind of grieving and maybe a little and didn't understand all about death and they've lost loved ones and they've been, I just don't understand. God help them to understand they're in a better place and we're going to meet one day when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing for me.